So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, man, we made it. It's Friday. Yes, sir. <laughs> you made it. So kick back, relax, man. Um, this one, this one is setting up to be something pretty crazy. Uh, the description read, four young men disappear. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the disturbing case of Cosmo DiNardo, but the description said four young men disappeared all at the same time. At the same time. So this is, I think this is going to be another one of those crazy ones, as most of them usually are. Um, and for this video, I think it's perfect timing to watch this kind of video when it comes to young men. Because uh, when I hear young men, I think, you know, men in school, young, young teenage men, young teenage boys or whatever, however you classify it. So um, if they may be older, I'm not familiar with this case, but the reason why I say that is because what's around the corner? What's around the corner? School. As a matter of fact, my children start next week. Next week. That fast, that soon. So... With that being said, man, it's time to hop back into parent mode, you know, keeping track, making sure I'm on top of things, um, who your friends are, what, what are y'all talking about, you know, what's going on, how are you feeling, how is school treating you, ain't no bullying going on, is it? All of these questions you have to ask, ask these children and, and, and keep that dialogue open. So things don't happen, man. Things don't happen. And... If you have, if your kid has a, a, a cell phone, definitely have an old, one of those cell phones where you can keep track of them. You can track them. It's one thing I enjoy about the iPhone, and this is not an ad, but you're able to track them. Best decision I made in my life. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't going to hold you up no longer. We're going to get to this case. All right. So if you're new to the channel, man, hit the subscribe button, join the fam. And it's just one thing we got to teach you how to do. We got to teach you how to do it. It's not how to do the Dougie. We're not teaching you how to do the Dougie, bro. We're teaching you how to run the likes up, baby. So make sure you hit that like button. Let's go. Hey, you, and welcome. My name is Mike. And in this here video, we're going to Pennsylvania, mm. which I think might be the first time We've gone there, one of these old videos. Is it? I think so. Can we cross that off the list? This is the story of the memorably named Cosmo DiNardo, who does, who does sound like a Marvel supervillain. The year 2017, the place, Bucks County, Eastern Pennsylvania. So this is just recently, not even what, four years? Completely, almost four years? One strange week in July. So if you're up for it, let's get into it, you and I. Sure may as well. Bucks County in eastern Pennsylvania has a population of over 600,000 people. It's filled with parks, golf courses. To the east, you're smack dab between Philadelphia and Trenton. To the west, you're in some beautiful scenic and historic areas. But we're not going to those. We're going to a hot, sunny July in 2017 when over the space of three days, four young men mysteriously vanished. The first to vanish was 19-year-old Jimmy Patrick. On the 5th of July, it was a Wednesday, he left his home that he lived in with his grandparents in Newtown Township at 6pm. He told his granny he was popping out to get some grub, wouldn't be long. However, by 2am there was no sign of him. His granny texted asking where he was. 22 times she texted, to which she got no reply and he never showed up for work the next morning. The next day, when Jimmy's grandparents called the police, they got a half-assed reply, a brief report was filed, they got a, uh, you know, he'll, he'll turn up eventually, don't worry about it, kind of answer. Then, 19-year-old Dean Finocaro vanished the following Friday. Dean was a troubled kid, had a few run-ins with the law. He both bought and sold drugs, and his family were concerned about how he was turning out. He also struggled with depression and had checked into a mental health facility, but by July 2017, he, he seemed to be getting his stuff together. 
That day, the 7th of July, Dean told his family he was heading out to meet a friend. And he was last seen at about 6.30pm in Middletown Township. His phone was off when his family tried to get in contact. They contacted the friends they knew of, and no dice. And a missing persons report was filed for him too. Now, one thing's for sure, bro, I, that I can never, don't sit right with me, right? Is the whole wait 24 hours or wait however long when somebody first filed a missing report or missing persons report. I get it. Maybe majority of the cases uh, or people who file missing person, that person turns up. Cool. But I feel as though that beginning, that first initial amount of time, that first 24 hours is critical. What if that person needs your help still alive and they kill them when you decide that, okay, it's been long enough. They really are missing. Like, I don't make that. Somebody make that. A, a, a lot of y'all are a lot smarter than me. Make that make sense to me, please. That same day, the 7th of July, at about 6 p.m., 22-year-old Mark Sturgis from Ben Salem told his dad he was going to meet up with his longtime bro, 21-year-old Thomas Mayo. Thomas and Mark, right, they both worked together at a construction company uh, owned by Mark's dad. But they were last seen that Friday. They never showed up for work on the Saturday. Other than Mark and Thomas being best friends, the four boys didn't know each other. And it was very startling that four young men around the same age would vanish within a few days of each other. Oh. Three of them on the same day. When Mark and Thomas were no-show on Saturday, Mark's dad began to worry after he couldn't get in touch with him via mobile phone as it went straight to voicemail. He called Thomas's parents hoping maybe he was with them or they knew something. They were in the same boat, they knew jack shit and were equally worried. A police report was filed and the search began. The very next day, Sunday, Mark's car was found at an outdoor shopping centre about 30 minutes from where he lived. And wouldn't Thomas's car be found? that same day. How they found Thomas's car was true. one of the other missing fellows. See, as they went through Dean Finnecaro's friends list, they happened upon one they couldn't contact. And they learned this friend owned a farm, not far from where Mark's car was found. Mm. On a hunch, they went up there. It was a little dilapidated, but in a shed, they found Thomas's car. The title and keys of the car were there, which was odd, as was Thomas Tom's diabetic kit, something he wouldn't leave behind and would be in big trouble without. And the fourth missing person, Jimmy Patrick, his cell phone was pinged to that same location. So there's four missing guys and clues about all of them are leading to this exact same place. A guy on Dean's friends list, Mark's car found there, Thomas's car found there, Jimmy's phone traced there. Good afternoon, Jim and Rahel. Authorities did just meet at this media staging area to give us an update on these disappearances. The district attorney here in Bucks County spoke, saying all of the county resources are being dedicated to, quote, returning these men home safely. Now, last week is when the four men went missing here in Bucks County. Those men include two teenagers, and it spawned this joint police investigation with local and state police from Plumstead to Middletown townships. The missing men are Jimmy Tarpatrick, who was last seen on July 5th and reported missing at after he never showed up to work that day. Two days later then, Jean, or excuse me, Dean Finochiaro went missing and the last reported sighting of him was getting into a vehicle near Finochiaro's home in Langhorn. Also on July 7th is when Mark Sturgis and Tom Mayo went missing. They were seen in the Doylestown area together. Authorities overnight located the car of one of the missing men and then focused attention on a house along Aquatong Road. Police are not saying what they have found at that home or how it is relevant to this mysterious disappearance appearance of four men here in Bucks County. Do y'all think it's connected any any type of way? We already know they don't know each other, except the two dudes that was together, right? So do y'all think this is somebody that knows them or completely just random? Completely random. What do y'all think? Like, I don't even have... I, don't, I have no type of direction right now. I'm, I'm thrown for a loop completely. There being a farm owned by the DiNardo family. The DiNardo family had a son, Cosmo DiNardo, 
He was the one on Dean Finicaro's friends list. Cosmo DiNardo's story is really about how systems can fail and how those failures can create monsters. Cosmo was born to a wealthy family in 1997 and grew up in Ben Salem. His parents, Antonio and Sandra, owned multiple companies, a concrete company, a delivery one so they could both produce and ship concrete, and they were also part of the good old game known as real estate. In 2005, the DiNardos purchased a 90-acre property in Solbury, some 20 miles from Ben Salem. It became a vacation spot for the family that included riding ATVs, deer hunting, and of course, shooting guns. Cosmo attended a private elementary school in Ben Salem. He was a good kid, happy-go-lucky. He even got Peacemaker of the Month because he was, I guess, so easygoing. Good for him. He then went to prep school and was captain of the Bucks County Bears until he had to call it quits on football due to several concussions and a neck injury. Now, concussions, you know, are something that's come to the fore over the last decade or so as we learn more and more about their effects on the brain and brain injury. We're still a long way off, but, you know, we're learning more about them. It's become a big thing in football. So Cosmo had quite a few, and I think it's relevant. Now Cosmo was intelligent and had a high IQ. He got a scholarship to Arcadia University. He was a biology major, maybe thinking about becoming an orthodontist. Fix up those gnashers. But there was a dark side to Cosmo. See, he would have about 30 encounters with the police. What? Quite a few. Nothing that would result- Yo, is this by any chance starting to give y'all like the Aaron Hernandez vibes? Y'all remember that story? The football player, professional football player who ended up murdering those people, then killed himself in jail, played for the New England Patriots, went to Florida. Starting to give me those type of vibes in his arrest though. You think that, you know, 30 times would kind of build up, but he did come from a wealthy family, so there were concerns over his mental health, domestic incidents, his alleged improper riding of an ATV, traffic citations. So although there were quite a few, maybe he was just a rich kid who thought, you know, the rules didn't apply to him. But in 2015, there was a turning point. That's really when the, uh, you know, shit hit the fan. He'd broken up with his girlfriend, and a plan to become a Navy SEAL hadn't worked out. Don't know how he got from orthodontist to Navy SEAL, but there you go. In February 2016, he was diagnosed with a major depressive disorder. He didn't complete the second semester of his freshman year at Arcadia University, and dropped out. And in May 2016, Cosmo was involved in an uh, ATV riding accident at the, at the farm in Salbury. He was pinned under the ATV for hours, fractured bones up and down his leg. He would be in a wheelchair for a while after, but the most important uh, injury was to his head. He had bleeding in his brain and his frontal lobe was damaged. The frontal lobe helps govern personality and impulsivity. So if it's damaged, it's like uh, someone cut the brakes, if you will. Inside voice becomes outside voice. Anger, aggression may be hard to control. What happened to Cosmo? His, um, his switch done got flipped. Soon after the accident, he started using K2, a synthetic cannabinoid that can have some unpredictable effects. So now we're in doubly what's going to happen territory because he wasn't getting any real help for his brain damage. And uh, now he's using a uh, synthetic drug that could uh, mess with how he saw the world, which was already messed up. But everybody around him was like, ah, he's fine. Don't worry about it. Be grand. In July 2016, police got a call for help, not far from the DiNardo vacation home slash farm. Sandra, Cosmo's mother and Cosmo, got into a fight that turned physical. Cosmo bit his mother's arm and gave her a black eye, just before jumping out of the car, limping out into traffic, and attempting to get into another woman's car, claiming he was trying to escape a kidnapping. He thought uh, his mother was a Russian spy, 
and that he suspected she was poisoning his food, so he refused to eat her cooking. See, now this is where I feel like, like the doctors and in hospital, they have to, he has to be released to some type of of special care. You know what I'm saying? When you know that the the, the front part of his brain is damaged, which can cause him to react violently or do different things. And then, you know what I mean? I, I feel as though special precautions have to be taken. I know it's not the hospital's responsibility, but I, I feel like a little bit, the, the human side of me feels like it should be them saying, okay, listen, he's diagnosed with this. This happened to the front part of his brain. This can affect, okay, so what's the next course of action? How are we going to, how are you going to take care of him? You know, he needs to be under supervision. You know, if he's released to his family or if he's released on his own, it should come with some type of requirements, stipulations, maybe seeing a, seeing a therapist every week. You know what I'm saying? Just to see where your mental is, some kind of way to keep a gauge on your mental stability. Because you can obviously see once that ATV thing spiraling out and the, the synthetic weed didn't help either. Should have been a bit of a giveaway to how he was doing. When the police arrived, Cosmo was handcuffed and he was admitted to a mental health institution. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, schizoaffective disorder and schizophrenia. He said the voices in his head were telling him to be violent. See? He'll start listening to them. Cosmo would be institutionalized three times in five months, and he was put on different medications. However, as he was only institutionalized for brief periods at a time, and was on and off his meds, it did, uh, it did sweet fuck all. In December, he attacked his dad, Antonio, with a brick. And so, as you can imagine, the family started to become quite worried about his mental state. A few months later, in early 2017, he was arrested while driving as he had a shotgun in his car with ammo. You'd think, you know, leaving guns around a person in his state would be a bad idea. He is not fit to be on his own. This is like, oh my gosh, bro. He is not fit to be on his own. Three times he was committed. Or however you say it. Like, he is not fit to be by himself. I, I see why he said at the beginning of the video, the system failed him. You know, just a thought. He was arrested and charged with second degree felony you know, weapons charge. As a person who has been involuntarily admitted to a mental institute, he had no right to carry a firearm. None. But those charges would be dismissed due to a paperwork issue. So, uh, you can see quite a few things were let slide, let slip, as his condition deteriorated, and it will continue to deteriorate. The doctors even thought his bipolar disorder was in remission, even though he was taking his meds every other day instead of every day. His medication was reduced. The issues he was going through psychologically weren't, though, so... And it was around then, right, that two things happened. Both of which led to what happened. One was he began running a drug business. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought I might have seen it. Did I go blurry? Let me see. Can I look at the screen? I'm not looking at y'all now. I gotta look at the screen. Let me see. Did it go? I don't know if nothing's in here. Y'all keep saying something might be in here. I don't know. <laughs> and the second was his friendship with one Sean Kratz. Sean Kratz was Cosmo's second cousin. And let's just say he was probably the worst person Cosmo could have been around. Mm. Not long before the gruesome twosome stuck up a friendship, Sean was investigated for his part in an attempted murder in Philadelphia that left a man in a wheelchair. Sean had been shot in retaliation and walked with a limp. Now Cosmo's parents, um, they were worried about Cosmo obviously, and they were unaware of his new best friend's 
past because they were just happy Cosmo had a friend because it seems like he had no friends whatsoever. But they really should have picked up on what Cosmo was posting on social media. So we got all that, and of course this selfie. Remarkable, no one reported it. And then in July 2017, four men disappeared. The clues they left behind leading them to the Denardo farm and to Cosmo himself. I can tell you for sure that uh, this investigation of course is a priority for us and for every agency involved and we've been working round the clock on it will not rest until we know exactly what happened. Yeah, District Attorney in Bucks County saying the police presence that we now see in Solberry Township, all of the resources in the county being dedicated. They're searching a home over there. Again, not saying what they are looking for and what they are finding. Police being very, very hushed lip on this investigation, saying only they're focused on returning these men home safely. They held a news conference here just a few minutes ago to really make a plea to the public and ask people with any information, anyone with tips to come forward. The county's district attorney immediately directed the search team to the 90-acre Denardo farm, bringing in all terrain vehicles and heavy equipment for what was now considered a criminal investigation. And on Monday, the 10th of July, Cosmo Denardo was labeled a person of interest. He told the police, sure, yeah, okay, I was with Dean. That's the one person I was with the day he went missing. But they got into some kind of fight and he left Dean at the side of the road. After that, he did a bit of the old fishing, was never near the DiNardo farm. The shotgun charge from a few months previous that was dismissed, well, they needed something to bring Cosmo in, you know, so that was refiled. Cosmo was arrested on those weapons charges. Um, but then, you know, the next day, his dad, Antonio, paid his bail. It was 10% of a million bucks. Cosmo was out. That didn't last long. Investigators hope four Pennsylvania men who mysteriously vanished are alive. A huge search is underway on this farm north of Philadelphia. Now, it belongs to the parents of a person of interest, Cosmo DiNardo. He was released last night after posting 10% of his $1 million bail for an unrelated weapons charge. DeMarco Morgan is outside the property in New Hope with how the strange disappearances have rocked the community. DeMarco, good morning. Good morning, Nora. The district attorney says the search at this farm is the largest of its kind in the county's history. He hasn't revealed why they are focusing on this location, but he's confident investigators are on the right track. This picturesque part of Pennsylvania is one of the safest in the state, but the disappearance of the four young men has shocked the community. It's frightening. I have a 20 year old and I'm concerned what what happened to these boys. Nearly 100 state and local police have been joined by FBI agents and U.S. Marshals in the all out search. They are using everything from hand sifting tools to heavy equipment, says Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub. It's 90 some acres and we're going through it with the equivalent of a fine tooth comb. Families of the missing have been keeping vigil on the edge of the farm. Cadaver dogs have been brought in, but no human remains have been found. Investigators are clinging to the possibility the missing men are still alive. I have hope. I think that it's very important to hang on to hope until there is no room left for it. 19-year-old Jimmy Patrick, a Loyola University freshman, disappeared last Wednesday. Dean Finocciaro, 19, Mark Sturgis, 22, and Tom Meal, 21, vanished two days later. 20-year-old Cosmo DiNardo, who was arrested Monday on an unrelated charge, has not been named a suspect. Police say he suffers from mental illness. Meanwhile, a massive search was underway on the DiNardo property. However, Cosmo being out didn't uh, last long either when he was arrested. Again, for different charges. See, a friend of Cosmo's came forward, saying that Cosmo had sold Thomas's car, the one they found, for 500 bucks. Cosmo was then charged with stolen property and theft. He was set on $5 million bail. Everyone, a person of interest was just arraigned on new charges. 
That is correct. Cosmo DiNardo was arraigned inside the judges' chambers behind me just about 45, 50 minutes ago. He's currently on his way to the Bucks County Correctional Facility as we show you some video, a picture of him. This time bail was set at $5 million cash. That's the highest bail amount the judge has ever set. It means the family cannot bond him out at 10% of that amount, which is what happened yesterday when he was being held on $1 million for a weapons charge and his family came up with 100000 DiNardo now stands accused of taking the car of one of the four missing men and trying to sell it to a friend for $500. The no getting out this time. Especially when, on Thursday, the 13th of July, the remains of three men... Where could he have... What, what could he have done with them? Where, where, where could they be? Maybe they're not on the property, but 90 acres is a lot, so it's going to take them a lot of time to cover that amount of ground. Like, in a detailed fashion. Where? Like, what? What, what could he have done with them? Do y'all think they still alive? I don't know, man. This dude here, I, don't, I just don't know with him how to take it. That were recovered from a pig roaster that had been dug in a 12 foot deep grave. Investigators uncovered a mass grave that contains multiple human remains. The more than 12 foot deep hole is on a 90 acre farm. This is a homicide, make no mistake about it. The bodies were identified as Mark, Thomas and Dean. No whoa, 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 what? Hold on. Mass grave. In a 12 of three men, especially when... $500. I had to go back, like, hold on. No getting out this time. Especially when, on Thursday, the 13th of July, the remains of three men were recovered from a pig roaster that had been dug in a 12-foot deep grave. Investigators uncovered a mass grave that contains multiple human remains. The more than 12-foot deep hole is on a 90-acre farm. This is a homicide, make no mistake about it. The bodies were identified as Mark, Thomas and Dean. No sign of Jimmy, the first person to go missing. Yeah, and Cosmo confessed to the murders. The next day, Sean Kratz too was arrested and charged with three counts of homicide. Officials said that the murders sprang from three separate deals, right, where Cosmo and Sean were gonna sell uh, the four young men between a couple of ounces and a couple of pounds of the wacky tobacco missing young men were buyers. Uh, in fact, Cosmo knew Jimmy from prep school and he knew Dean from ATV riding. But they had no explanation for, you know, why at the time a few, you know, minuscule little drug deals you know, why that could lead to this. During his confession... A drug deal, bro? I That was the last thing. I'm trying to figure out how they are connected, thinking maybe knew something, they had some type of history, he might have been jealous of them, maybe they was living the life that he wanted. But this came down to weed. Cosmo told the investigators that on July 5th, he agreed to sell Jimmy Patrick four pounds of marijuana for $8,000. You were selling drugs, right? I was middlemaning deals with drugs. This particular deal, I was not making any money. I was just, you know, getting him a good price on a large quantity of marijuana. Cosmo drove to Jimmy's house, picked him up, and then drove Jimmy to the farm. There, Cosmo said, Jimmy admitted he only had $800, and so Cosmo offered to sell him a shotgun instead. The gun sale did not happen. Instead, Cosmo shot Jimmy dead. I get there, you know, said, okay, well, let me see, you know, the 8,000, let me see the money. So I, I got to count the money, there's 800 bucks there. So I'm like, dude, if you don't have the money, like, this, this is horrible. This is not good for me. I said, well, I could sell you a gun, so... We get out of the truck, I hand him a shotgun, he goes to shoot it, and I shoot. Alright, so after you shoot him, I go get the backup, dig the hole, you know, set a prayer, turn it all. That was the beginning of Cosmo's killing spree with Sean helping him out. On July 7th, two days later, 
they drove to Dean's home to sell him weed, but decided on the way that they would rob him and murder him instead. Sean and Cosmo picked him up in Middletown Township and drove him to the farm as well. Earlier that day, Cosmo had taken his mother's hidden handgun, a magnum. When they got to a barn on the farm, Dean was shot in the back of the head several times with this gun, allegedly by Sean. After he was down, Cosmo shot him one or two more times in the back of the head. I gotta meet up with Dean. Or are you going to meet up with Dean? A drug deal. This is pre planned? Yeah. What's he to buy on you? Quarter pound of weed. I don't have a quarter pound. I have right. two ounces. So we picked Dean up. Now, this was a robbery. We are gonna, you know, rob him in the woods by himself on a bonnet and kill him. He did. So we come back into the barn. You know, we're looking at the best buy ad, and when we stopped looking at that, Dean turned around to go walk out. When I went to turn, I just hear a bunch of shots go off. Dean goes down, face down, dead. Good. I took the gun from Trump, and I shoot Dean, you know, I think once or twice. I don't know how many times I shot. Why well, was he not dead? No, he was dead. Okay. But I just, just to finish, you know, just I just shot him. I'm not lying, he was dead. Okay. He was, his head was split, split the hell open. His brain, you, you probably found it. And his brain was on the, in the barn. His body was... Wait, what? Dude shoots him. He's down, dead. You take the gun from him and let off two more times or however many more times? Yo, this is just horrific. <laughs> then wrapped in a blue tarp and placed into a metal tank he called the Pig Roaster, an old oil tank that had been converted into a cooker. And they weren't quite done yet. That same day, another meeting was arranged to sell weed, this time to Thomas Mayer. Cosmo headed out to meet him at the shopping centre where Mark's car would be found while Sean stayed at the farm. Once they met up, it turned out to Cosmo's surprise that Thomas was not alone. He was in the company of his best buddy, Mark Sturgis. Cosmo convinced them to head over to the farm where the transaction would be carried out. Mark got into Thomas's car and they followed Cosmo to the farm. Upon arriving, the boys sensed that something was off. And as soon as they turned their backs to Cosmo and Sean, Cosmo shot Thomas first, who fell to the ground, screaming. He said something's not right. So, when they turn their backs on me, mm -hmm. I shoot Tom in the back, drop him. Mark's like, what the? Uh, uh, he was such a big kid, I loaded the gun on. Cosmo then turned the gun on Mark. He don't even sound like... He's even remorseful for, for it. Like, he sound like he just telling this, like, play-by-play. Play. Like, he's a sports center analysis, and he giving a play-by-play play from the game last night. No remorse. Mark, who was killed, trying to run away. But Thomas wasn't dead. Uh, the bullet had hit his spine. He was paralyzed on the ground. And Cosmo was... And Cosmo was out of ammunition. He's paralyzed. He goes, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. I went and grabbed the machine because he's screaming now. I mean, I'm surprised the neighbors didn't. Why, why are you shooting them again? I'm out of bolts. Screaming, going crazy. Sean's like, got his head in his hands. I grab tobacco. You know, he sees that coming, just shuts the fuck up, and I just run him over. Afterwards, Cosmo used the same machinery to put both bodies into the same tank that held Dean's body, and they tried to burn the bodies. <laughs> After that, Cosmo and Sean both showed up at the Donardo home in Ben Salem, and according to Sandra, you know, Cosmo's mother, they were in great form. She even texted Vanessa, Sean's mother. Mm. Mm. 
clueless. The next day, when the boys were reported missing, Cosmo and Sean returned to the farm to cover their tracks. Cosmo would show the police to Jimmy's body, which was buried on the farm, and due to that and his confession, he avoided the death penalty. He pled guilty to four counts of first-degree murder, along with additional counts of robbery, abuse of a corpse, conspiracy, possession of instruments of crime, and illegal firearms possession. Cosmo was sentenced to four consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Sean was offered a plea bargain first, a mandatory prison sentence of a minimum of 59 years. He turned the prosecutors down and the case would go to trial. You know, Sean actually wanted the uh, death penalty as he wanted to become notorious. Wow, look at you. Talk about courtroom drama here in Doylestown. Members of each of the victim's families were there as Cosmo DiNardo admitted in court that he committed those horrific crimes up in Bucks County last July. Then DiNardo's cousin, as you mentioned at the last second, rejected a plea deal linked to his alleged role in three of those murders. Still, when it comes to Cosmo DiNardo, we now know he will spend the rest of his life in prison. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get his blaze of glory. Instead, he got a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Convicted killer Sean Kratz was sentenced today in Bucks County Court to life behind bars. The sentencing closes a grisly murder case that prosecutors have called one of the most horrific days in the county's history. Mm -hmm. The murderers are now behind bars, um, but the story doesn't end there. Wrongful death suits were filed against the DiNardo family. All of the victims' parents were in tears today, describing life after losing their sons. They believe more should have been done to prevent the accused killer, Cosmo DiNardo, from getting a gun. On Monday, the attorneys for the families of Dean Finicaro, Tom Mayo, and Jimmy Patrick announced wrongful death civil lawsuits against the accused killer, Cosmo DiNardo, his parents, and his cousin, Sean Kratz. See, a big aspect was that the gun used in the killings... And I think they can either go further than that. Sorry to say it, but I think they can. I think they got cases with more people than just the families. That Cosmo used, and Dean may have used as well, it was Sandra's gun. So the DiNardos had, you know, negligently provided the weapon. The family insisted that after Cosmo had first been admitted to the mental institution, all guns had been removed from the home, except for the 357, which she kept in a hidden lockbox. In 2020, it was ruled that the parents of Cosmo DiNardo can be held legally responsible under Pennsylvanian law for the deadly actions of their son. Another thing was that on, you know, the 7th of July when three murders were carried out, Cosmo tried to reach his dad over the phone multiple times and demanded his dad go to the farm. As it turns out, according to a police report, Antonio did go up to the farm, he was driving up. Antonio had a mis mistress, uh, she was in the car also. So when Cosmo saw that his dad's mistress was there, he was like, you know what, you can go, actually, it's fine. Because Cosmo wanted his dad to come alone. So, did he have some, um... Would his dad have been killed if he had gone there as well? Alone? Would there be a higher body count? Well, I mean, one thing's for sure, if they hadn't been caught, there's certainly would be. Now, the police had no clue about Cosmo's prior involuntary admissions to psychiatric care. There was no database. But there were so many slip-ups in this case, from the over 30 times he had run-ins with the police, to the failures to adequately provide him with medical and psychological care. The system failed him for uh, sure, I think. You know, this shouldn't have been allowed to happen. I mean, hindsight, looking back, you know, it's 2020, right? You're always going to see what you missed. But there were so many giveaways in this case, you would think someone should have caught on something and should have seen this coming. Yet, here we are. But, you know, at the end of the day, Cosmo is not the victim here. Dean Finicaro, Jimmy Patrick, Thomas Mayo, and Mark Sturgis are. Bro, if you got kids, this one hits home, man. Like I said before, scariest thing for a parent is their kid walking out the door and never returning. Putting them on a school bus and they, they never come home. Taking them to somebody's birthday party and you never see them again. 
dropping them off at the mall with their friends and you come back and they're not there. Scary, 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 scary. This, this has a lot of, you know, you, you hear the stories about people with CTE and how it affected these players and how a lot of them killed themselves or went on to have just issues, you know. Like I said, this reminded me of the Aaron Hernandez story. We got to pay attention to the signs, man. Now, should the family have been held liable? I think that's a great debate for the comment section. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. It's your boy L, man. Till next reaction of my peace, y'all stay solid. Hey.